because yeah. there's so much juice in the middle. Everyone hates the middle. Yeah. Everyone's like, ew, the middle. But there's so much juice in the middle. There's all these fun, amazing learning experiences. You just yes. become so different. I have been transformed by love. And, you know, I have to say, like, my big problem, <laughs> I could reel guys in left and right, clearly, <laughs> look at me, obviously. But, yes. <laughs> but, I was not in love. Yeah. And so I went my whole life, like, not in love, you know? And I was like, I always knew there has to be some, I got to get that lightning strike at some point, you know? And so I would settle, not because these guys, there was anything wrong with them. Some of them were handsome and they were all wonderful. Every single last one of them in their own unique way. Yeah. But I didn't feel that way. And so when someone meets someone, and you feel that connection, like, I think it's worth fighting for. I think it's worth going all in on. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Especially since that doesn't happen often <laughs> at all, at all. No, I mean, that that's, it, it is worth everything. It's, it's so worth just to have that in your life. And you're spot on about the, the journey on the way when manifesting a specific person, the things that you're going to find out about yourself and in the transformations that you're going to go through just as you, it, it's all incredible. It is all incredible. And, and, and for the, in, in the name of love, that's even better because love is everything. Love, love is, the, the, we are love, you know, and when it's that special person that just, does everything for us and that like you said that lightning strike it, it, that is such an incredible journey and it's so worth it so it's worth it I heard uh, I don't know if you've heard of him he's a youtuber he's somewhat famous and his name is Stefan Leboisier and he is kind of um I think that's from more of a Christian perspective and he talks about love and he says, he goes, honestly, like that's kind of his niche. And he's like, it, it's usually instantaneous. Like it's a connection, like, whoa. Oh yeah. yeah. That's what he said. And he also said, you're lucky to get it once or twice in your life. Yeah. Yeah. Literally. That's Some people that's sadly don't, you know? Right. Right. And we'll think about it, Missy. How many people settle yeah. Right. So like, here's a temptation that clients of mine have had. A rich guy comes, she's struggling to pay her rent. You know, she's waitressing, she's mm -hmm. nannying. It is so tempting to marry someone you don't love. You're, yeah. You don't, the sun, moon, and stars does not rise on this person. And you, it's very tempting. And so I think that's why so many, there's so many divorces and so many unhappy relationships. It's just, here's the bottom line. There was never a connection. You don't really love this person. You chose to marry them for convenient reasons or for compatibility reasons, or because you felt, felt that you guys were good enough friends and you can tolerate each other, but that's not the fairy tale love. That's not the love that changes who you are for the better and pulls out the best in you, the goddess in you. And think right. about it too. In or if you love someone and think they're amazing, they're probably the most amazing soul you've ever met. You're gonna have to up level to get oh, yeah. really ready. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like it pushes you to be a better person. You want to level up your life. Mm -hmm. You know, whereas before maybe, you know, we're complacent or we're like, you know, we're, we're okay. But when that spark hits, when you meet that one that is just does everything for you and completely blows you away. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That, that's what makes the transformation so powerful because you will, you want to do everything so that you can have this love and you can, you know, share this love with this person forever. Mm -hmm. And and so the, the, that journey is absolutely incredible. And, and that's, you know, I, I hear about people settling and it's like, oh, you know, no judgment if that's what people decide to do, you know, mm -hmm. but there's, uh, there's no better feeling in the world than that spark. Mm 
when you meet that one, mm-hmm. not, nothing better in the world. Nothing. Yeah, I think that's why people are very fascinated by Neville Goddard's SP is people are inspired by love. They're yes. inspired. They're like, you know what? Is it possible that I really could have anything in the in the world that I really wanted if I really focused there and persisted? Like, is this real? You yeah. know? So it really pulls people in. Yeah. Well, who doesn't love that concept or idea? Holy crap, we can we can do anything, really, any anything. Mm-hmm. It's fascinating. Of course you're gonna be intrigued. <laughs> I just, I feel like there's just no way that, that we were born and sent here to live like, you know, be plan B. No. Like, like, I just, I feel like whatever happens in the middle from getting, you know, from starting your decision about an, um, of something you desire and really connecting with that, which my thoughts are that those desires are placed in your heart because they're, they're meant for you. Yes. They're meant for you. That's why they're there. Yes. A desire is there because it, it, that's, it's for you. That's your gift. It wants to be with you. It wants to be your experience. Yes. Yeah. Like what you desire desires you. Yes. You know? And so that thought of like, yeah, I just, I just don't think we were born to play B game. No, I just, I don't think we were born to come here and like, let's say, pretend you want to be a model or you want to be a housewife or whatever. You want to be a CEO. Like you should do what you want. Yes. <laughs> you should get what you want. That's your destiny. Yes. And that that's, I had the same feeling too my whole life. I couldn't really describe it, but I was like, there's more to this life than what meets the eye and, and what some people might believe you know that we're just oh life happens whatever you got to deal with it you just got to deal with it you just got to roll with it whatever I, I, I never I never subscribed to that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it, it's like you even see one person on the planet that has what you want it's like that should give you evidence that it could be yours too like thank you you know thank you I mean just the proof that it that that it exists and somebody else can do it why, why can't you why can't you like I don't know Missy can you tell the viewers like just from your personal experience what are some things you had to do to up level to get your SP back and get this thing rolling in the right direction oh man <laughs> <laughs> oh what didn't I have to do I, mean, it was, I well so you know I, I said earlier I, I you know it came from a household that wasn't you know the best it wasn't exactly functional that took a lot you know that put a lot of scarring on me and just growing up I was very angry I was very depressed I suffered a lot of anxiety just I was just that was not a good place (laughs) and so naturally the events showed that you know because I carried all this resentment so I was met with a lot of crap and a lot of things that would continue that cycle and, and prove those feelings to be true. So I really had, I mean, I had to clean house is the best way to describe it. I, I had to really take a step back and be the observer and just look at my life objectively and look at the patterns, look at the circumstances, look at what my mindset was, look at what my thoughts were, look at all, you know, and really, I remember spending a couple of days just really paying attention to my thoughts, really catching what was going on. And a lot of this I did in meditation. I felt that it really helped when I quieted my mind and see what would pop up and do this throughout the day. And I was like, oh my God, there is so much garbage in here. Like, yikes. So that really prompted me and spurred me to, I had to process and get rid of this. I had to get all of this crap out of my life and out of my system. And a lot of that I did through revision. Um, A lot of that I did through imagining better scenes, imagining that, you know, instead of the bad circumstances that happened, I imagined the good circumstances, that a good circumstance happened instead and things like that. And I I mean, I went in deep and this was weeks, if, if not a couple of months of just cleaning house and getting rid of all, all that stuff is I didn't 
want it to be a pattern anymore. Mm -hmm. And I realized even though I could manifest pretty effortlessly, I, you know, at that point, I was pretty consistent with being able to, you know, oh, I, I want this. I imagine it would show up, but things would keep kind of cycling back to what I didn't want. And, and when my SP left again, the second time that was, I was like, man, I, I, I got to be, um, I, I got to just completely change, like fundamentally. And Neville even talks about that quite a bit. Um, he talks about, it especially in his lecture about the fundamentals of, of, uh, of the law. He says that there needs to be like a radical psychological change of the self if you want to master the metaphysics and if you want to master the law. Mm. Well, I was like, I went all in, mm. changed all of that. And it was after that happened, things took off. That was like the, the dam broke wide open. And then it was like manifestation after manifestation after manifestation after manifestation. And I felt better than I ever have in my entire life. I felt emboldened like I never have in my entire life. It, it was incredible. Mm. Absolutely amazing. How did you, Missy, when he called you back? What's that? When, when your SP came back in, you know, <laughs> once and for all, how did he reach out to you? Did he call you? Did he text you? Was he like, oh my gosh, you're the one I have to have you? He texted me. Mm -hmm. And this was, we, so he left again. And it was probably about three or four months that he was gone. And I was actually, um, I think I was at work at the time or I was on a shoot or something. And um, I heard a couple of pings go off on my phone. And so when we went to lunch, I opened up my phone and I saw that they were messages from him. And I was like, huh. <laughs> and that was kind of like, I, I didn't really overreact because I had, I had already been imagining that we were together and it felt normal and natural. And I, I guess, I knew that it was inevitable and, and I, a part of me was just confident in the fact that it wasn't a matter of if it was a matter of when, and, you know, we don't always know when the manifestation is going to occur. We don't know at what time we're going to see it happen, but we know that it will, if, if we are able to persist and if we are able to keep ourselves in that state mm -hmm. of our wish fulfilled. And so I remember but yeah, I was at lunch and I saw my phone and I saw, I got two messages from him and he, he was like, Hey, I really want to talk to you. I think I screwed up. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Yeah. yeah, you did. <laughs> and after work, I, I called him and we talked for oh God, like two hours or something, something ridiculous, but he poured his heart out and he was like, that was the stupidest decision I ever made. I don't know why I, I don't know what I was thinking. You're absolutely the one for me. And I, it, it was everything that I had been imagining. It was like, again, almost to a T what I had seen in my imagination. He was finally saying to me and a part of me was dumbfounded and shocked. But then a part of me was also like, this, this had to happen. It, it was inevitable. I don't know. It was very mm -hmm. odd to describe it, but we've been together ever since that night. That's so beautiful. And it's like, people don't realize, yes, you, you can manifest, you know, your life and certain people, but you manifest things away and sometimes for good reason. Yes. There, the, guys, what's really, I think, important if you're playing long game with your most, I call it most fabulous self in life, but a lot of people say like your dream life, whatever it is, your plan A, if you're going to play long game. You have to know, you have to take responsibility when things come and go. And it is not always bad. There are, there is much value in being dumped and figuring your SH out and yep. getting it together, honey. And yep. getting back up on that effing pedestal where you belonged all the time. Yep. Like that is what is going to make you an invaluable partner and just, and, and also being able to build all the dreams together with your partner that you want. Yes. yes. And I stress that so much. I, I, you know, what I teach on my channel and what I talk about with my clients is that, you know, when you are able to take that time and really work on yourself 
and really become the person that you desire to be that amazing, incredible, wonderfully loving partner, person, whatever. Just imagine how amazing things are going to be when he does come back. You know, when, when they come back and you've already worked through all of the things and you've already <clears throat> come to that place of power and, and you've really stepped into that emboldened self, it, it, it is a fairy tale. It is like, it, 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 I don't have the words to describe it, but when something happens and it may look devastating, it's not always the case. Mm -hmm. It could, you know, for a lot of people and a lot of times, that's really just a sign that this is still something that needs to be cleared out so you can finally have that everlasting long game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I'm learning to really be, I'm like game for, I know this sounds really weird and I don't know if Neville, my boyfriend would agree with this, but I think what, <laughs> what, I, what I've learned is I welcome and embrace the, in the middle is what he would call it. I welcome it. And that does come with sometimes tears, hard emotions, questioning. And I think a great word, someone smoking weed in my building. Oh, maybe, you know, we'll see how I change in this video. <laughs> I don't know where it's coming from. Uh, anyway, okay, I digress. Um, I think that purging, you've used that word, like, you know, releasing, purging, pulling this darkness out of you and putting it into the light yeah, I welcome it now. I used to be so like scared. I didn't want to suffer. I don't want to feel this. Way. But the more I welcome these emotions, I'm not my emotions. I'm just feeling them, you know, and yes. I welcome them as they arise. I find they just lift and pass right through me. Like in that, no time. That. Yeah. When we, when we're not spending the time trying to suppress them or not feel them because, you know, stay away when we actually allow it to just kind of work its way through, it will just move on by. And, and what you said a minute ago is so important. I'm not my emotions. I'm feeling them, mm -hmm. but that is not me. And that's so important. <laughs> and the fact that you're already saying that is incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can really, it's almost like I'm learning to like observe my emotions. Like, okay, she is, you know, upset about this, that, or the other. And, you know, I just, I feel like I can go, I feel like I just trust, yeah, that, that these things come and go. I'm a, you know, I'm a human being, so I'm going to feel things, but it's never for forever. The sun always comes out again and you're going to get your way one way or the other. So you may as well just you know, just keep on trucking, I guess. Yeah. It is so important that it, it's key. It really is. And that kind of mentality is, is such a good one to have of just, you know, if I can just get myself through this and I will, because, you know, the world's not going to stop just because I'm having a hard moment right now. It'll pass. It has to. And you know what? I don't know, Missy, if you've noticed this, I have girlfriends that have met the love of their life when they were so upset and unhappy. Uh, you know, I've, I've, I've had manifestations where I was like hopeless in the moment. Like you, you're human. You're going to feel up and down. You know, you're going to have yes. all kinds of feelings. Like it doesn't mean you're not going to get to the end of what you're going for. And I think of that's course. important for people to remember that it's okay to yes. have a bad day, a bad, you know, Yes. Oh, that's so, I'm so glad that you mentioned that because that is extremely important. A lot of people are sometimes, you know, especially when they're new to manifesting and they're trying to really get the hang of this, they're terrified to feel anything but joy and sparkle all the time. And I mean, first off, that's not realistic because we're humans. And, and second off, we just can't, we, we have to be able to process. We have to be able to go through that. And, and yeah, just because you're having a bad day doesn't mean that you're not going to get what you want. I mean, I've manifested plenty of things in a crap mood. Like, totally. You know, totally. That's, that's so important. Mm -hmm. that's, don't ever suppress anything. Yeah. Yeah. Own them, feel them, let them pass through. 
and I've yeah. heard some spiritual people say, welcome and love them. And they, will, and they will be released. Love casts out all fear. Love casts out the hatred that you may be feeling. Love casts out, you know, the ball and chains. I, I've, I've healed physical things through love. I had a bronchitis type of cough that I would get every year like clockwork for, for like four or five months out of the year, just every year as if I was near cold weather. And I put my hand where I was feeling inflamed and I decided for the first year ever, I wasn't going to resist it. I wasn't going to say it couldn't be here. I wasn't going to fight it because I would always like fight it and be angry. And I, you guys that follow my podcast know I get all these funny comments. The girls are like, Jenny, that cough. Like I just cough my ass off on my, on my YouTube videos and my podcast. But anyway, I decided I was going to take a different approach and I was going to release the resistance to this dang thing that kept coming. I felt, and my friends make fun of me when I tell them, I could feel instantaneously it softening and within one week it was gone. And that, it was like a physical healing just like that. Go. That's amazing. So crazy from, from not resisting. So, you know, one thing I learned, see, I, I always say like, I just, I owe so much to my Christian upbringing. I learned how to surrender and flow, but still stay hopeful on the end. Yes. So it's a weird, um, it takes a little bit, I think of maturity, honestly, I think that's the word, like a little bit of wisdom, a little bit of maturity. It's hard to kind of put your hand on it, but it's the best way I could describe it. Like is it's a weird balance between surrender and flow and love being in that space and staying very focused on the desires in your heart, which have been placed there because they're meant for you. You owe it to yourself to never let go of that. But in the middle, yeah, that's how I describe it. I don't know what you know. That's that's, I couldn't have described it better. (laughs) That, That is absolutely spot on absolutely spot on and it is that that almost like a balance of the masculine and feminine energy like mm-hmm. know what you know what you want to stay focused be direct but let go of that resistance let go of feeling like you need to fight and claw for it mm-hmm. and yeah real quick <laughs> the how is not my concern doesn't matter The how is not my concern, you know, for, for those of you guys watching, and by the way, manifesting an SP can be pertaining to family members. I have a girlfriend of mine that found her sister after like, again, it was like a 25, 30 year distance and she manifested her sister. I was like, it's just so beautiful. And she was, she really played her cards right guys. She, she, she told me, she goes, I always knew in my heart that I was eventually going to connect. And in the meantime, she just kept living her life. And she, it's so beautiful. And she wasn't super concerned with the how. And I have learned that, that there is a genius doesn't even do the word justice, but whatever, a genius, something happening in our subconscious mind. And that's moving through the universe, which is our creation and our consciousness that we're seeing. There's something genius going on. that's just maneuvering this chess game in a way that we don't even have to worry about. Ew, do oh. work. Let the, let the genius side of me, you know, do the work. Yes, yes. Yeah. We don't need to, and that's something, as humans, we typically have always needed to know how something is going to happen. Like, we need to figure it out. We need to solve this problem. We need to do this. We need to, like, let that go. You don't need to know that how. It, it's, and honestly, it, for me and for a lot of people that I've talked to, my manifestations have always played out in a way that I didn't, I couldn't fathom that they turned like that the bridge of incidents looked the way that it did. You know what I mean? Like, so like we have to be able to surrender to any of that and any of that feeling like we got to fight or push or shove or figure it out or spin our wheels. And it, no, none of that, <laughs> none of that. Just go to the end, just go to the end. Go to the end and just let, I mean, Missy, what do you think about, um, you and I, you mentioned to me in our coaching session, you're like, these days, Jen, I'm going general. Can you talk about that? Like, you know, is that, 
is that just something you're feeling in the moment and just there's not any like sort of real specific thing that's just on your mind right now or is it like you kind of recommend that in some ways be going general i i honestly do more recommend that i recommend going more general um for a number of reasons it well not to say that you can't be specific not to say that you can't get very specific with what you want but i found that especially for people that are new and especially for people that may not have you know full faith yet or there's still that doubt there's still that uncertainty what have you um going more general can be a really excellent way to bypass any of that resistance to a specific situation because mm -hmm. sometimes the specifics feel like uh, that's never going to be able to happen and that's never going to be able to like there's no way I can do this this and that versus if you are putting yourself like getting more general and, and focusing on the feeling of what again going back to that person that you desire to be what would you be feeling if you were living your dream life what would that feel like and then uh, just marinate in that feeling and honestly, I've been doing that more and more these days because no matter what happens, if I am in a state of gratitude, if I'm in a state of feeling confident and successful and just joy and blessed, that's ultimately going to be my experience. What it looks like, I don't always know, but I can't have terrible things happening to me if I'm in a state of blessed and joy and feeling satisfied. Mm -hmm. So I, I found that going more general, I mean, A, sometimes it can help break up those resistance blocks and strengthen your belief in the law because you'll see more things happen to you that fall in line with that feeling. Mm -hmm. And who doesn't want to have that be like the dominant state in their life? Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, because it's like, if you want love, you just want to feel loved. You want to give that to yourself. No one can give you what you don't give to yourself. Thank you. Thank you. you it's got to it. come, come from you first. And, and the same thing with, with money. It's not the money that people want. It's the feeling that money gives them, mm -hmm. that feeling of security and freedom and abundance. Mm -hmm. It's it's not the piece of paper. Like mm -hmm. you, <laughs> it's the feeling mm -hmm. that I learned that too because I teach voice lessons it's one of the many hats I wear and I the <laughs> the girls that come in you know every one of them I want to be a Grammy winner I want to be you know Shakira I want to be blah, blah it's like then they and they and most of them as I'm I'm all for it like be whatever you want like I don't care anything you want go for it but I find that they tell me as they go along the journey, I really just wanted to sing and be loved. And da, 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 da. I didn't necessarily want to be Shakira. She works 80 hours a week. She has a, she has a staff of 150 people that depend on her. She's a CEO. She has pressure for days. She has constant poppers. I really didn't want to be Shakira. I just wanted, I wanted to feel loved. I wanted to feel like I could sing, you know, and, and feel gorgeous on a stage. Well, you know, that, that manifestation can come in many ways. There are many right. ways an artist can make money as a singer. Of course. Some people do just social media and that's how they make it. It depends. Yeah. So a lot of times you have to, uh, this is such something I'm really learning. You got to know what you want. Bingo. You got to know what you want. And that takes a little bit of time with yourself. Like it takes, it's like, this is why even negative experiences are everything's for your gain. Everything's working out fabulously for you. Because even if you date the wrong guy, you're like, that's who I'm not marrying. I want this. Yeah. I learned, I ended up, I'm divorced. I married a wonderful man and he's fabulous, but we ended up deciding it was best to get divorced. And he, I met him because the man I dated before him was, ugh. and it inspired me. The guy before him was, he's kind of a dusty. I don't mean to say that's not nice, but I try not to use that word, but he was a dusty. And 
I said to myself, because I had experience now in my 20s with a Dusty, I was like, oh, no, no, no. I'm marrying a guy that has an Ivy League degree, who's like, you know, moving it. He's brilliant. He has the world in front of him, a good man, like with solid character, a marriage minded man. And what did I do? Bam, yeah. manifested him and had a rock within like three months because yeah. the negative experience helped you do what you know. Want. It's yes. all working for y'all. Everything, yes. everything, everything, everything. And that's what the, that's why it's so important to be observant. And that's why it's really important to pay attention to what you're feeling, even through the negative and almost especially through the negative because finding what you want is the first step. Like knowing what you want, knowing what you desire and knowing what that person feels like and what that life looks like. You, you gotta have that figured out beforehand first and foremost so whatever you're experiencing even in the here and now is going to give you a better picture of yes I want this no I don't want that and honestly I don't know for, for me I've, I've found that like when I was able to be more objective and and not so like laser focused and, and just more general I was able to come to those conclusions a lot easier. Yes. Yeah. I think that's a great advice. Like for, for um, people watching that just, they're just not sure on certain things, which is totally fine. Like totally fine. just being general until the clarity comes. And well, then when you know what you want is when you become a manifesting queen. That's what I find. Like once you know, yeah. <laughs> like that's the hard part sometimes and that's why sometimes people feel like oh I'm not good at manifesting da, 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 da. that's not really what it is once you know what you want it's going to come probably quicker rather than later but the yes. issue is that like sometimes in life you know you're just going through times where you're figuring out what you want <laughs> and that's okay and that is encouraged to do so yeah yeah. You know, spiritual growth is not always an easy path. It's almost never an easy path all the time. So there's a lot of figuring out. You're going to be changing a lot. And what you desire now might not be the same thing when you're further down this journey. So just be observant and, and pay attention to what really strikes you and what, what brings you joy. Yeah. Yeah. I would say too, Missy, because one way to help to um, make the process easier as you're building, you know, your life as, as Missy and I are, we're, you know, we're all still in the process is that go big though, go big, because if you go small, you're going to get that and be like, <laughs> like, I'm so bored. So <laughs> go big. Like, so for example, if you know, that you're attracted to a certain type of guy, for example, and maybe he's really special. Like he's not that common. Like, I don't know. He just, he's just a unique guy. Yeah. You got to go big because otherwise you're going to be like, oh, this is just not really what I'm wanting. So I, I'm a big fan of like, as we talked about before, like I'm not a fan of plan B's. I'm a fan of going for plan A all the way. You got to put yourself all in. Yep. All in. Yeah. Go all in on you. Yes. Go all in on you just as much as you want a, the love of your life, your partner. You want them to go all in and all out for you. They'll do that when you go all in and all out for you. This is stuff that you learn on your SP journey. I don't even think I could have said this stuff a year ago, Missy. I really don't. That's, and you, you're nailing it so perfectly. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. You, you gotta go all in and be that person that, you want your SP to show up as you yeah. got to do that for you first. Yeah. I kept, one of my things that I noticed, I had patterns where guys were coming into my life to date me and to court me, but I felt like they were, um, somewhat, how can I describe it? Somewhat not living up to their full potential. It's kind of a weird way of like, you meet a guy and he's brilliant, but he's like, in some ways he's still timid. In some ways he's still holding back. In some ways he's still not fully unleashing the, the person that he can be. Well, guess what I found out? I was doing that. Yeah. <laughs> I was doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Playing B game. I was 
for various reasons, sometimes they're not even all that deep, but just for various reasons, I wasn't fully all in on yep. moi. And I was seeing that in the mirror reflection. And now I'm like all in. I'm like, oh, this is who she is. She's going all out. She's going all out. There's, there's no plan B. And I expect my future husband to be all in and all yes. out. And I expect him to be like that in his own life too. I expect it. I don't want anything less. I don't want any like low self-esteem, low confidence, confused. I did all that in my twenties. I'm over that. Right. <laughs> that part's done. Yeah. That part is, no, you, ah, this is so spot on. And I love hearing this because it's so important for people to hear this. You it's gotta, a- you gotta take that leap. You gotta go all in. If you're timid, if you're back and forth, that's all you're going to see in your life. The, the, the world, the 3D world is just a mirror of what's going on in your mind. And if you're feeling hot and cold, if you're not sure, if you're going back and forth, that's how your partner's going to show up for you. You got to go all in. You got to love yourself and you really got to embrace everything. It's so true. It's like, oh my gosh, guys. So just look at the patterns, whatever your pattern is. Look at the patterns. You'll see, there. You'll see it. You'll see why you keep attracting that same type of guy. You'll Every see, time. you know, the same type of friends, the same work situation, you know, you'll see it crystal clear. It's, you can connect it back to basically for long story short, the thoughts in your mind where you're focused on long story short. All starts up here. The mind Every- is so powerful. Oh, it's oh, everything. Man. It literally, literally yeah. is created first in the mind. And yeah. imagine it, it's powerful stuff it's powerful stuff but I I love the messaging here and I I love really I I mean especially for just you know really actively doing this for a couple of months holy crap you you really have some gems here that you've discovered about yourself so uh, hats off to you seriously thanks Missy yeah I think I think guys what you have to do is for those of you that come to this kind of stuff later just love and appreciate all your lessons. Like I said, I don't, you're not going to hear me talking about, um, like, I don't feel the need to bash my Christian upbringing or to bash my experience um, just with law of attraction only. Like, I'm going to take the nuggets of wisdom I learned. I'm going to just assume that everything is for my best interest. Everything is always working out for me. Everything is so perfectly unfolding. I'm just going to go there. And it helps us to make peace with, you know, the experiences we've had in our past that aren't so great. And, you know, you feel like sometimes you're like, oh my gosh, I wasted all. Like for me, I got to New York in my dream apartment, in my dream neighborhood, everything. It took me so long. I'm like, why? At the end of the day, I'm like, you know what? Who cares? I'm here. Yeah. Who cares? I made it. Did it. That needs to be celebrated. Yeah. Yeah. We we, we can, we can dwell on all of the things that we didn't do or couldn't do, or we, we could spend all of our lives in the past, you know, commiserating over all that crap, or we can be grateful that we are now doing it and that we now have the the knowledge and the ability to really take a hold of our lives Mm -hmm. and make the changes that we want to make now. A -hmm. lot of people never have that. Mm -hmm. So uh, Mm -hmm. gratitude will take you very, very far. And, and this is, this is why so great to desire things, because when you desire things, it brings out the best in you. You begin to see that you have to change. Yes. You have to change and you have to grow and you have to address things and you have to open up the monsters in the closet and just like figure all this stuff out. And it's such a beautiful journey that yes, there's tears. It can be scary, you know, up-leveling your mindset and then watching your whole 3D up-level can be quite overwhelming, especially for people that have never had abundance or never had, you know, certain luxuries. They've never been loved like that. Like it's, it can be a lot, but you have to just keep persisting because you were, the way I understand God is that he's, he or she or it or whatever is experiencing itself through us. Yes. And yes. And wants to explore and have love and adventures and fairy tales and new experiences. So, you know, it's all all for the good. Yes, absolutely. You're nailing it perfectly. I I can't follow it up better than that. We, We are, God is experiencing through us. We are all God experiencing life as 
humans as me and you on this planet. So anything that you desire, that is a gift from God, literally. You are meant to have it. Oh, wow, Missy, this has been so good. Do you, I don't know, do you have any other questions or topics you want to bring up? Or? I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm really, I'm not sh at the top of my head. I don't know. <laughs> it was just kind of, I, I love getting caught up in these conversations though. And, and uh, more than anything, I, I just, I hope that the viewers really can find that strength within and, and find the strength to keep going and keep persisting. And even during the times that it may be scary or intimidating, and especially during those times, because mm. they will happen. Mm. But it's on the other side is so incredibly amazing and so beautiful that it, it, anything is worth it. it it's mm -hmm. all worth it. Yeah, this has been so great. I guess uh, since the video went so long, we can just probably chop this in two guys. Um, you know, we'll just probably put the first half on my channel and the second half on Missy's. I guess <laughs> I'll just tell everybody where you guys can find me since this will probably go on the second half. Yes. Um, it's just jennylinchung.com. And that's where you guys can see all the services and the products that I offer, such as one-on-one -on -one time with me, voice lessons and um, skincare and things like that, like beauty oriented stuff. So jewelry. So all that's on my website at jennylinchung.com. And um, what else do I want to say? Yeah, my website, my, I have two channels. I have a singing channel. It's just Jenny Lynn Chung. You guys can hear me sing. And then I also have her fab life, which it, which is just a lifestyle channel that really essentially, it's just me showing what I'm learning. That's really all it is. It's like my growth, my learning, my process. Here's where I'm going. Here's the ups and the downs. It's not unheard of for me to cry or to have a bad day on my podcast and my YouTube. It's totally normal and totally okay. But ultimately the trajectory I'm moving on is most fabulous self in life, period. That's it. And yeah. whatever happens in the middle, you know, I, I do share the middle is essential. That's kind of what I do. I sort of share the middle. Yeah. You kind of show the journey and the process. And, and, and to my viewers, like I really strongly, you got to go check out Her Fab Life. This channel is incredible because you actually get to see the process as somebody is growing. And, and really, I think that's something that a lot of people can connect to as they're going through similar things and in similar places in their journey. So I like everybody, please go check out Jim's channel. Like, uh, I don't know. I, I really was moved to tears a couple of times when, when I found you uh, a handful of weeks back after we first spoke and thank you so much for this and for reaching out. And I know that you are going to, like, I, I already know just from your power and just from your presence that all of the good things are in store and you are going to master this game of life. <laughs> you, there's no doubt. Thank you so much, Missy. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. So check out Jenny Lynn Chung. Seriously, you are amazing. You've been incredible. Thank you, Missy. This has been so great. And yeah, guys. So I hope you enjoyed the collaboration. <laughs> you guys. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.